Um, two things real quick. I want to talk about two ordinances that I kind of kept an eye on from last year. Uh, the parade ordinance and the sex offender ordinance. Um, number one, I know that the parade ordinance was voted on, I think, May, and then you had to re-vote in, I think, June. I, sometime around there. Okay. Um, at that time, I noticed that there was going to be an ad hoc committee to address all the concerns with that parade ordinance because there were some serious concerns. That ad hoc committee has not met yet. I want to find out what's going on with that, with that committee. Um, number two, with the sex offender ordinance, there's also some serious flaws within that ordinance that was, we were told they, they were going to be addressed in December. That ad hoc committee only met once in August. Uh, one of my big concerns is the zone hopping um, problem. And um, as well as I've gone to some parks, like for instance, Blind Brook Park. Um, there's not a sex offense, not a child safety zone sign at that particular park. Um, there is a series of problems within these two ordinances. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with these things. Are, are, are we going to get these two things resolved, especially the parade ordinance? That, that committee has not met, and it's almost been about approximately nine months. So I just want to find out what's going on. Okay. You ready? <laughs> Um, oh, and by the way, uh, I, I did. I went. I saw you at the land trust. I, I, you did a great job in informing the public. I didn't make, with I didn't make your. Uh, I didn't make the show. No, it was all up there. I put the whole <laughs> thing up. Even the little girl doing a little poem. I know. A couple of things. Uh, first of all, it is a parade ordinance. Uh, what we want to do is wait and get some feedback from the chief and see how it's working. I know. Uh, I don't mean to pick on Jean, but she does use it a lot, and it works pretty good. Uh, it, you know. So in terms of, uh, we've never turned one an application down. What we are finding, though, is it's expensive um, because in the past, what used to happen, and this was really the, the big issue for me on this ordinance, was that groups that wanted to walk down Main Street, uh, whether it be a Eucharistic march from St. Peter's or whether it be the AOH Hibernians Parade, uh, would be charged for uh, the police uh, protection of closer streets. So we would generate a bill, of, and on a Sunday, that's about four or 5,000 bucks because they have minimums for the police officers and everything else. We would generate a bill, I'd have to run after the chase to pay the bill. Sometimes they would, sometimes they wouldn't. Uh, then we had other groups that would have parades and would generate a bill, but we'd never just never pay. So what I like about the ordinance now is we don't bill at all. So I don't have I'm not in the position of begging the AOH or begging St. Peter's to pay the bill when I know other people have no intention of paying. It, it puts everybody on a level playing field. That's the good news. The bad news is um, we probably have rung up about $150,000 in police charges for all the parades and things that go on. Uh, the night of the, of the um, uh, uh, ordinance that we did, the ICE, well, not ordinance, but the ICE meeting was, that was the $15,000 night. And so those uh, numbers, they escalate quickly, uh, and so uh, they, that's been a problem. But I don't think we should charge them just <coughs> too much of a headache trying to chase people. There are other questions about the amount of people, um, right. and I think one of the things is we'll look for is recommendations from the chief about is this working? Are you turning people down? I don't think we've ever turned somebody down on a permit, but the good news is people have been really good about coming in to get a permit, so we've been able to organize where people are. But uh, if we find, uh, uh, you know, and I'll talk to the committee chair, if we find that there's a burning issue to go in and look at that, well, we certainly can do that. Um, the second issue is a sex offender. I think Mary set up the meeting in March. Mary, Tyson, chair, chair. It'll be March 13th. Okay. March 13th will be the meeting. A um, couple of things. After the ordinance was adopted, there was a, an Indiana case, an Indianapolis case that came out. Uh, yeah, kind of, the right, that kind of narrowed the, the scope a little bit of. of when was that ruling? This. I'm sorry. When, when was that ruling done in the Indiana Indiana case? The Indiana case came like right out with the ruling right after we adopted the ordinance, if I remember. <coughs> yeah, Basically, it says we'll be better off if we list by name all of the parks. So right. we've been generating a list now in a permit center. Sean's been doing something else. Right. What we were trying to do is set it up where we had the bounds all set up for um, for each zone. So <coughs> it was a center. and um, that wasn't working out. It was ending up being very time consuming. Sean wasn't able to pull all the information. That's what was taking so much time. Now we're working on a computer program that'll show the zones. Um, we've opted to call back the the committee now, especially with the spring coming up, and hopefully that'll be up on the internet with the zones right It'll now. be off the web page, right? right? So you'll be able to see which zones, and then there'll be some interactive, right? Won't there be some? The Copeland, he's working on it with the GIS yeah, with system. So, so, so they want us to define the actual zones instead of just saying any park, you have to actually list them out. Um, Brook, I'll check on that. 
Uh, and maybe we had to order more signs. We've got most of them up, but Blindbrook's not up. I'll make sure that we get one out there. And, um, the Police Athletic League, is that considered a child safety zone as well? Well, we're, we're posted We're posted at the, at the town park. But that's our property, so we consider that sign to carry both areas. Right. But uh, we can, you know, I think we did the first batch, and we ran through about 100 signs. And we'll, we'll pull out more. We just added it, so we uh, had to take it back on somebody to carry a while. Right. Um, so uh, uh, we're on the 14th of that. Um, and then there was a third question now. Uh, sex offender, the sex offender order. Uh, well, back on the sex offender, one of the major concerns to, from people I talk to is that they just don't know where these places are located, and they want to have more accessibility done. Especially, you have the city website right there. There should be a link stating, like, here's the offenders, here's the places where you can't go to. So parents will have a better understanding on who to look out for, because personally, I just don't feel all that comfortable that the fact that although the, the sex offender was caught, he was caught because a police officer was reading the newspaper. If he wasn't reading it, that offender was at Terry Wild Park around kids. And as a parent, that alarms me a little bit. Sure, as it should. Um, I, again, I think the web page will list out the parks. We're not going to list out the, the offenders on the page. I don't think we plan on doing that. We do no. mail to them each year, remind them that this, this ordinance is in place and that mailing is getting ready to go out uh, to you know, inform them. But I'll tell you, too, part of the problem we have is, is it's a, a very transient group for a lot of reasons. So a lot of times we get mail returned, we send out certified letters. It's, it's difficult. Our officers are good about tracking these folks. We have a great youth bureau. The detectives are really good about knowing who's who, and just like our Ethan Mabel picked up that by looking at the paper. And then finally, the other thing I just want to say is that Governor Rell's got a terrific idea by on a license putting uh, some kind of insignia there because while we can pull up the list on the laptop in the car, we have our, our tough books that are right from the police car. So if you complain about somebody who's been lurking there, he can pull up the list and say, okay, yeah, so and so is a sex offender. Just ask it for the license would be a lot easier if it's marked on there. So that's really a good idea for these couple of these ordinances.